Teddy bear's part, Justin. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back to Maui. <laughs> Today is a special day because we are going to be showing you one of my all time, hands down, favorite fish recipes that I am. Hey, Pookie, this is not my dog, but this is my parents' dog, Pookie. And today, Pookie, we're gonna give away one of my very favorite recipes I've ever invented, and it is called Pesto Cranberry Stuffed Fish. It's delicious. Today's fish is a beautiful mahi-mahi. This one was given to us from a local fisherman. Mahi are one of my favorite fish to spear because they're just such curious creatures. They're also quite promiscuous and they um, multiply a lot, making them a very sustainable food source. But the really cool thing about them, besides them being absolutely delicious when they are fresh, I really like skinning them. So I want to show you how to skin a mahi. Are you ready? Justin? Yeah. <laughs> I like the nod. That is good. We're just going to slice through the skin. This isn't the sharpest knife. Wow, this knife is really dull. I'm at my parents' house. They need to step up their knife game. But see, I'm not even, I'm just trying to break through the skin. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm going to come all the way up along this backbone, all the way to its forehead. Then there's still meat over here, so I'm just gonna meet up with that first cut. There, that's good. I'm gonna just surpass the belly area because that's not gonna be one of the filet pieces that I use for this particular recipe, so I don't need that part skinned necessarily. I'm gonna come back right here. Just draw my line. If you have a sharp knife, it'll look way smoother, but that's okay. I think we're ready for the magic trick. Are you ready? Are you catching this? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna follow you. Start from the head. Let's do this, Justin. Oh, wait. wait. Pause. Pause, pause. Just gonna cheat a little. Oh, that's some meat. Okay. Are you ready for the magic trick, Justin? Ready. Okay. Not messing around this time. Ready? Go. Follow me. Follow, make it. Let's make it one smooth camera motion. <laughs> That's cool, right? Like I know that might not have been the smoothest execution. Did that on purpose. So cool. We don't need it though. <laughs> <laughs> Shucks, I almost, whatever. Okay, next up. What was that? I just thought you I could. You have scales in your hair. <laughs> I thought I could gain momentum if I, you know. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna fillet this. But isn't that cool how that skin just came right off? And mahi is just such a great fish. What I really like about it is that it stays so moist when you cook it, when it's fresh. It only gets fishy and dry when it's been frozen too long. Running it along all the way to the center bone. Fish cutters who are really good just go right over this bone and keep cutting. I don't really have that. I don't know, I just go on the other side. So once I just remove both sides, you know, from those bones and they are kind of meeting up at the spine. Then I just poke my knife at the tail all the way through. I just come down like this. And then, and I just kind of pull up and remove it from the vertebrae by just pretty much touching it with the blade. You can kind of go up and down, I guess. Now I'm just gonna cut down to remove this top fillet. Look at that. And so that already, that's a lot. This is a lot of fish already. I'll just cut it so it fits on the cutting board. 
And I mean, that is more than enough fish for us to eat right now, Justin. But we'll just remove this fillet as well. But you do the same thing to the next side. If you want to eat the fish eggs, if you want to eat other stuff, go for it. But right now we're going to work with these fillets because I just really want to show you this excellent recipe. All right, so this is so much meat, so much beautiful filet meat, way more than what I need to work with today. So I'm just going to use this one piece and I'll put the rest in the cooler. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'll just clean it up a little bit. There's still a little bit of bloodline. I honestly don't mind it. Some people get a little weird. So for the weird people, We'll just remove it. It's just such a small part anyway. Mm. Booyah. And then I'm going to cut this into, oh, I'm gonna go three pieces just for Justin, Buddy and I for lunch. And now here is my trick, okay? We want to, this is going to be a stuffed dish, and so we want to kind of butterfly this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just, I'm going to go, go like this. I'm going to cut it like so. I'm going to open it like so. Now I'm even just going to, if it's still a thick part, I'm going to do that again. And I'm just going to... I think that's good. That's good. I basically want, what is that, like quarter inch, half an inch thickness. And so I'm just cutting into the thick parts and I'm opening it up by making it a really long, thin fillet. Look at how much more space that's covering. So I'm kind of just starting at the fattest part of the fish. And you could do it different ways. So yeah, I could go like this. I could just cut in that way. Oops, open it. And then I could cut in this way and open it. Okay, that wasn't the best example, but it's okay. Maybe stick with the first method. And now <laughs> I'm gonna season it. Whatever salt and pepper you have on hand, Let's do both sides. Pepper, you can just do one side. So that is seasoned. Now we're gonna do the special part, the stuffing. I sauteed onions earlier because we knew we wanted to do this outside. Onion, sauteed in olive oil, and that is it. Okay, this is actually not Grey Poupon. This is homemade macadamia nut pesto. And if you want the recipe for this and you wanna see how we made it, we have our episode, our open fire uku episode, where we made this from scratch. If you don't want to make it from scratch, just go buy a good quality pesto, but look at that. So this is garlic and macadamia nuts and olive oil, sea salt, and, what else? and, and basil. That's the main ingredient, basil. And so that's why, aside from the onions, I'm not adding any, you know, sauteed garlic or anything else because no need pesto has it all. The next ingredient, which some might think we use this way too much on our show, <laughs> mayo. But it's really, really good in this recipe. It makes it just creamy and delicious. It's an aioli. You don't have to overdo it. And then you can mix it. And then look at this creamy, delicious pesto sauce. Okay, so now we have sauteed onions, fresh, beautiful pesto, and some mayo. And what we're gonna do is we're going to smother it on this fish. So I'm facing it, so I just am facing it up. I'm facing it in the same way I cut it so that it'll go back together in those perfect pieces. And here's, here's what you do. Spoon it on, okay, and you can, you can just do like that because you're going to fold it back up or you can just 
make sure to spread it out completely so that you know that every bite is going to have some of that love. I think that's a good way to go. Generous, not overly generous, but Buddy will eat a whole serving himself. He eats more than most adults I know. Okay, and then the secret ingredient. Cranberries. Isn't that festive? So interesting, right? Fish and cranberries. It is great. And so really, don't be, don't be stingy. Don't skimp the cranberries. You will regret it. It might seem really weird. It might seem like, Kimmy, you're so overdoing this one. I'm not. It's really good. These flavors just go so well. And yes, they go so well with fish. And now we have this beautiful masterpiece. Might look strange to you, but I'm telling you, it is delicious. And we're simply just gonna fold it back up. And that's what makes it stuffed. Whoa party trick right that's what makes it stuffed this one too the broken piece we'll give that one to buddy gorgeous so gorgeous okay the next step is panko panko is a japanese breadcrumb and i think it's important to use if not japanese panko use like a really good breadcrumb that you can that you really like don't just do flour. You want something with some real crunch and texture because it's gonna be your contrast to that creamy goodness. And so now you're gonna coat it in panko. What I normally do is I drizzle olive oil right over, coat it in panko. I didn't bring olive oil down, but the reason for the olive oil is because you want the panko to really bake and crisp up and that's what oil does but so anything with oil i could put the pesto because that has olive oil i have some extra of the aioli and that has oil too so i'm just going to use that this time and just lightly smother the outside and again it's not just to get the panko to stick but it's because we want that oil to hit the panko because that's what's going to make it like I don't want to say a fried, but kind of fried in a way. We're going to bake this. We don't just want these white weird crumbs, which it will stay if you don't add the oil to it. The oil is what makes it these golden, crispy, perfect, perfect texture, perfect color. Basically, you want your breadcrumbs touching oil just the same way they would when they hit a hot pan full of oil. That's what makes them turn golden brown and delicious. Okay, so this is ready to go in the oven. I have my oven preheated to 420. Going to pop it in for like nine minutes. Really important to do a high heat because I want to do it fast. So I'm going to do nine minutes. And these are fatty pieces. We don't want to overcook them. If they're smaller pieces, I'd go seven minutes. Still here. <laughs> okay, it has been nine minutes exactly. You don't have to take it out. I just want to show you that it's not going to be browned yet. That fish is cooked. That fish is beautiful. It's still moist. But what I want is I want this to be golden brown. So we're going to turn it to broil. That's a very important part of the process. Let this go for one minute, two minutes, no more. Don't want to burn it. And I hear a crying baby. So hopefully he's going to join us for lunch and be in a good mood. And he's in a great mood. What do Hi, you buddy. know? Okay. And this is looking beautiful. Very, very careful. Hot pan. Grumpy baby. All kinds of... Mm. That looks excellent. -y. Look at this beautiful picnic that we're gonna have, buddy. You, me, and daddy, okay? Do you have a fork, daddy? Yeah. Awesome. Because buddy is apparently starving. This is the buddy piece. So this was that piece that we absolutely destroyed and put back together. And now look at how perfect it is. 
Look at how perfect it's going to try it. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Oh my God. No, he, yeah. He's been screaming just looking at this fish, not being able to eat it. <laughs> Neither Justin and I have tried this yet, but it looks absolutely beautiful and Buddy seems to enjoy it. But this was just a dish that I thought up years ago, just imagining and visualizing the flavors oh. of pesto and cranberry and fish. Oh. <laughs> and as Buddy says, it is <clears throat> good. Right, Buddy? And just look at, um, what I really want you to see is just how, I'm gonna take a bite now at this fork, but like, it's that crispy golden outside, and look at that inside. Just so moist and delicious. Mmm, like asparagus too, good. So sophisticated, yum. It is just like, just, creamy and then the cranberries have this like this punch of like sweetness and tartness if anyone at home is like oh will raisins work instead no they absolutely won't you have to use dry cranberries it's so good it's a good eater you know you got your golden brown on that side got your nice beautiful mahi meat buddy come on okay yeah i'm ready wow here we go mm. so good sorry yeah, so much texture love in there <laughs> isn't that the, the texture yeah, yeah the crunch and justin is no stranger to this dish it is buddy's first time having it and i, I think he's really um you you, you disgust me what you're just doing to my beautiful cooking right now. No, no, you stick with the, you stick with the piece that we started on. Good, I'm glad. Oh, no thanks, I don't need any. I, I can feed myself, thank you. Mahi really is such a good fish for this. Isn't it? <laughs> Mahalo so much for joining us on our little family picnic. And I really do hope that you try this recipe because it is such a good one. So please give it a try and subscribe.